All right? So we're going to look at prayer from that vantage point. So word and works of Jesus, pray always, don't faint. Um, I want to start out by pointing out that prayer is for everyone, okay? In fact, although we have this way of calling people prayer warriors and saying that you have um, people for prayer ministry, really and truly, there is no such mention of the gift of prayer, okay? There's no gift of prayer in the Bible. Prayer is for everyone. Everyone is expected to pray. Everybody. So, in the same way that when you, are, when you come to God, everybody must repent. Everybody must receive the Spirit of God, right? It's something that everybody must do. Everybody must walk in the Spirit. Everybody must follow the Holy Ghost. It's one of those everybody must do things, okay? So, prayer is for everybody. Can we say it? Prayer is for? And another way of saying that is that everybody must pray. So I might do better in praying than you, maybe because I think more before I pray than you. Maybe because I'm more fluid in my thought. Or as we are going to see tonight, maybe I know more of the Word of God than you. Maybe I believe more of the Word of God than you. But really and truly, all of us are to pray. So prayer uh, the work and works of Jesus. So we're on this series here about the word and works of Jesus here at church in Waterloo here. So we're going to continue it. Okay. So ergo, Luke chapter 18 verse 1. The Bible says, first slide, Luke chapter 18 verse 1. Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought always to and not to faint. So this answers a few questions. Number one, men ought to pray how many times? Always. So when are you to pray? Always. At all times. Okay? Amen. Amen. Right. So, Men ought always to pray. And men, the term men, is a general term that relates to all men. So it is not just speaking about the male factor, as in a male person. And when it says men, it is talking about all men. Not just some men, but all men. So men ought always to pray and not to faint. Okay? So why don't we pray as much as we should? Oh God, I'm... Restricted here to not move so much, but it's going to annoy me tonight. Um, why do you think people don't pray? Why don't you pray as often as you should pray? Tired? No time. Not enough time? Hmm? You are so wrapped up in something you don't even remember to pray. Very good. You're so entangled. You're so busy, right? So, lack of time, lack of teaching, lack of faith. But there's a big, big one there. Lack of results. Go ahead, princess. What are you going to say? Social media. So, you're so involved in social media that you don't have time to pray. But, in general, most of the time... We don't pray because we don't get the results. This is really the biggie. If you love mangoes and you know where you can find mangoes, won't you go where you can find mangoes? Isn't it? If I know where I can get a KFC money every Friday, I mean, rock bottom, no matter what going on, rain or shine, lightning or thunder, hurricane, storm, whatever, I know I can get a KFC money from this place, right? Won't you go there whenever you need a KFC money? Yes, you will. Because you have an assurance that you are going to have a result. You're going to get what you desire satisfied. Okay? So, one of the big reasons why we don't pray as much as we should is for a lack of results. And this lack of results have many factors to it. Right? Most of the time, though, however, is for a lack of understanding of what prayer really is. Right? How many here think that prayer is begging? Let me put it another way. How many of you beg when you pray? 
You might not necessarily use the word God, I beg you. But Jesus, please, I am asking you do. Hmm? Yes, but you, you, don't just, you don't just ask, you know, and I know it shall be given. You're like, Lord, me really, I try to tell you, say, I am asking, you know. And, 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 and I am asking you. Some of you go as far as to say, I am begging you, please. That's right, don't let me down. Right? God, I need this thing. Right? You know, you, you have a certain earnest, uh, earnesty, but that earnesty is often manifested like you're begging. All right? Okay. Now, uh, next slide. Okay. Uh, I'm really going to go into this thing now. Prayer is a legal activity. All right? So I'm going to tell you something totally different, uh, a different vantage point of prayer. Prayer is a legal activity. Right? So man can do nothing without God. We can't do anything without God. St. John 15 verse 5 says, For without me you can do nothing. God can do virtually anything without man. He can. He actually can. But God will not do. That shouldn't be nothing. It should be anything. That's a typo. God will not do anything in the earth without man. Why it shouldn't be nothing? We are the linguists here. Why is the word inaccurate? Will do nothing. How do you do nothing? All right, I'm just pray, playing with your brain. <laughs> God can, will do. Anyway, 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 here we go. So, how God set it up is that we depend on him, but he also depends on us. God is depending on us. All right, next slide. All right, thanks. Next slide. Thanks for the correction. Next slide, next slide. Uh, it's actually nothing. It's correct. Sorry. Let's go. Next slide, please. Right. So what happens on earth depends on you. It depends on me. Because although God can do anything without us, he has set it that he won't do anything without us. Right? God wants our compliance. He wants us to be co-workers with him. So God wants you to be his co-laborer. He wants you and him to work together, right? So this is expressed, next slide, in what is called, right, at the dominion principle. So when we pray, right, heaven gets access and authority on earth. Stay with me. When I am praying, I am agreeing with God about the things that he wants on earth that are going to be released from heaven, but I am agreeing with God, right? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is where? In heaven. So God is depending on us to give heaven access on earth, right? What God wants when we pray? What, when we pray, what are we doing? Giving heaven access on earth. Come on, say it. Prayer is giving heaven access or authority on earth. Okay? God is depending on us. All right. So this is called the dominion principle. Let's go to Genesis. Wait. Go back to the dominion principle. I'm kind of giving trouble tonight. All right. So the dominion principle, if you notice the red dot... Everything points to the dot. Well, the arrows are not very clear because of the light. You would see the arrows. If you could look at that one, it's clearer. You see that everything is pointing to the red dot? That means that everything has to do with the red dot. And the red dot has to do with everything. Right? So when God made man, he gave man dominion on the earth. Control. Rulership, authority. That means whatever man says on earth becomes law. All right? So let's go to Genesis chapter 1. You're never going to pray the same way if you really pay attention to this. So, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion, control, rulership over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the cattle, all the earth, every creeping thing. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply. Replenish the earth and sub 
subdue the earth. Do you subdue something that is already under control? Who says no? Who says yes? Who says I don't know? Right, be honest. You don't subdue something that is already under control. You subdue something that is out of control. That is outside of subjugation or rulership. So when God made Adam and Eve, he gave them dominion and he charged them. He says, you are going to be fruitful. That means don't be lazy. You're going to multiply because it's only two of you that you start with. And then he says, you shall replenish the earth because the earth went into chaos. Remember in Genesis, Genesis 1, 1 and Genesis 1, 2, the earth was without form and it was void and darkness was over the face of the deep. So something had gone wrong in the earth. So God recreated things and gave man authority to subdue the earth and or to subdue and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Very, very important. So God said, man, you will be in charge, right? So anything that is going to operate in the earth has to come through man. Anything that is going to be in the earth comes through man. If you're a father, if, you're, if, you're, if at home you have your dad or you have your mom, or let's say you, normally it's mom or dad, or and dad, whatever mommy and daddy says goes in the house, that's what goes, right? Mommy and daddy sets the, the rules, Right? But mommy and daddy's rules are not different from the rules of the country. Can mommy and daddy set a rule that is illegal in the country, in the house? No. Some of you are looking like, oh, of course, at your house. Yeah, enough of them yard. No. Mommy and daddy can't set a rule in the house that is illegal in the country. So the house is like earth. And mommy and daddy are like man. And the government is like God. So God is the government. And God is working with mommy and daddy, who are we, to run things in the earth, which is our house. Let me see those who followed what I just said. Are you sure? Very good, very good. All right? Sleepy and tired and it's hot. Okay? So sit up a little bit. Square the shoulders. Move a little. All right? It's been a long day. They are up since 6 o'clock. Um, so, so God gave man authority in the earth and God says, okay, you're going to run things down here, but you're going to run it based on what I have set in heaven, right? So there is a partnership. There is an earth partnership. Man partners with God to subdue the earth and establish the kingdom of heaven in earth, right? All of this is necessary to understand prayer. All right, let's move on. So we must be prayerful. So prayer is essential to the fulfillment of our purpose on earth. Prayer is a must. It is not an option. So how do we get information and receive understanding about what should go on in the earth? Through prayer. So mommy and daddy has to keep abreast with what's going on in the world. For if the government says you cannot use any water to water, wash your car, then mommy and daddy have to know that I used to be able to wash a car last week. But this week the government says there's a water restriction and so I cannot wa wash the car. So mommy and daddy has to keep in touch with what the government is saying, right? Through a communication means, which is normally what? A newspaper, the TV station, the radio station that gives out information and mommy and daddy receive the information. Now prayer is a similar thing. We keep in touch with heaven as to what God is saying, what God is doing, and what God desires us to follow in the earth. Are you with me? I promise I'm going to do a short version of this. Amen. Because I see that you're really, really weary and you're really, really tired. All right. So next slide. So we are looking at prayer from a kingdom approach. Right? So prayer is petitioning God. <laughs> a petition is a legal term, right? So the Hebrew word from which prayer is derived has in one of its roots, right, the meaning of executing judgment or thinking. So when we pray, we are thinking, but we are thinking along the lines of judgment or government, right? So prayer is also a plea. Stay with me. When you're praying, you're pleading. 
<laughs> Prayer is a legal activity. So when you petition the court, you enter a plea. And what is your desire? A judgment based on the plea and whether or not it is constitutional or according to the court of law. Are you with me? They're like, really? Yes, it's interesting, right? So we are the lawyers who come before the court of heaven and make pleas about what we desire in the earth based on the constitution that is running heaven and earth. All right. Oh, by the way, we are in a heat bell right now. We are in a heat dome. We in the Caribbean and certain parts of Latin America, it is the highest temperatures recorded in years. Yes. And it's going to go on all the way till November, they are saying. So it is unusually hot. Right? So I understand how you feel, okay? You are frying, I know, right? By now it should be extra crispy. All right. So, all right. So prayer is legal activity. When we are praying, we are petitioning heaven. We are entering pleas in heaven. I, I'm just going to, I'm going to freelance. I'm kind of just going to leave the PowerPoint now because it will take me longer to go through it. All right. So when we are praying, we are entering a plea. We are petitioning heaven. But our petitions are based on the constitution, on the laws of the land. Right. Who is a lawyer really? What is the function of a lawyer? Those that are watching online, I'm using an interactive format, so it will be slightly different. Go ahead. A lawyer is when somebody assists somebody to court. Right. A lawyer is somebody who is paid to help people in court to do a case. Ah, I like the word. See people through court, help the people to paid to help somebody through court with a case. Right. Very good. These are bright students. So, the case is what? What is really a case? What is a case? It's, it's when somebody is having trouble with another person and then the person tries them to court. Right. So, somebody is in trouble and they need the law to settle their grievance. The settling of their grievance is based on the constitution of the country. The law of the country. Are you getting it? So if the government says it is illegal for you to come over my yard, teeth me come and fall, and take away two of my roosters, you are in violation of that law. So the petition is to the court to say we are going to render a judgment based on the constitution that you must restore the, the, the chicken and the two rooster, them were your teeth. So your case is your situation that must be handled based on what God has said is to be. This is important. I really want you to get this. So when we pray, we are applying to a heavenly constitution. In the constitution of heaven, there are rights, there are privileges, there are protections, and there are provisions, among other things. Please stay with me. So God has said that he will pro provide all of our needs, right? That's one of his promises. It is a part of his constitution. So when you have a need, you should pet. Petition God based on his constitution for the supply of your need. <laughs> All right, I'm checking the scholars. Do you get it? No, be honest. You don't get it, right? All right. So, the government of heaven says, as a child of God, you have right to health care. Healing by the stripes of Jesus. The constitution of heaven says, Whatsoever you ask in his name, believing you shall receive. 
the constitution of heaven says that the Lord shall supply most of your needs, some of your needs, all of your needs, according to his riches in glory. The heavenly constitution says, ask and seek and knock and so it is written in the constitution. Right? That's the constitution. What else is in the constitution? You are the head. Come on, children. Hello, hello, hello. What else is in the constitution? Healing is the children's bread. Good. What else? Huh? I will never leave you nor forsake you. Come on, the man. How do I get so boring? Come on. You shall, you have power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. You shall rebuke demons, cast out devils, lay hands on the sick, they shall be healed. Right? You're getting the sense of it? Hello, hello, hello. Those that call upon the name of the Lord, they shall what? Why I wouldn't want no one of me, my liar. Because the quote would have just dismissed you so you don't know your stuff. Anyway, you get the gist of it. Whatever is in the Bible, which is our constitution are the protections, the privileges, and the provisions of heaven. So when you need them, you access heaven's court by prayer. A lawyer, really, is someone who studies the law. So you are a lawyer. Ay, ay, ay. So you are the lawyer, and you are in the practice and your practice is in prayer. Come on. Your litigation is your prayer. Hello, somebody. So, so when you come before God, you are before the court of heaven. And you have rights. And you have privileges, don't you? I am a child of God. And as of such, when I'm sick, I have right to be healed. I say, it is my right. Did you know that? The government now of Jamaica says there's free health care. Is it so? Yeah. Is it free health care at the clinics? Where did government say? So you don't even know. So they say. That's right. But our government is limited in its resources. But the government of heaven is not. So he's able to supply all your needs according to his. How rich is God? Hmm. Undefinable. He's rich. So when we pray, we are coming to God and we are saying, Father, your constitution says, my Bible says, I am your child. My Bible says, you will give your angels charge over me. All right? And God, and right now I am afraid. Right? Right now these things are bothering me. Father in heaven, let there be peace in my house. In the name of the Lord Christ of Nazareth, let there be healing in my body. I demand of the court of heaven to release my healing, for I'm a child of God. Hello, somebody. So when you are praying, you don't beg. What is a more appropriate word for the activities of the lawyers in the court? You want to use the word beg. What other word would you use? You, authority is in it. You can add something to authority. You authoritatively request. What's one word for that expression? Demand. Right? It, we want to be nice and say command, but really and truly they might demand it. Because if the law stipulates it, and they can clearly show that it applies to you, Therefore, the court has to rule in your favor. Lord Jesus, I will reteach this lesson another time. But for the sake of our students, I have to shotgun it. That they kind of get to understand what I'm trying to say about prayer. So, when we are approaching God, you're not approaching God to beg him. You're approaching God with what? Authority and confidence. You're going to ask them to give it to you. Somebody has something that belongs to you. You're not going to beg them. I like that. You're not come, I'm not coming. You, let us say you, you, you have my thing here. No, it, it's yours, right? 
So I have your business. Are you going to come and beg me for it? No. You're going to come and ask me with confidence. May I have my? It's because, because it belongs to you, don't you? But don't look at us, though. Uh -huh. You are hungry. Anybody in here know what hungry looks like? Yeah, man. You are hungry. And you walk up to the bakery of heaven and look at the master and say, you know, I would feel so good if you could just beg you, please, hand me a piece of the bread there that is in the bin, you know. Help a hungry soul. You, you, you can oblige me. Shame on you. You're no beggar. You're no squalor. You are a son of God. The bakery, yes, you are a daughter. In the kingdom, we are neither male nor female. Um, so we are all sons. So you are a daughter of God. You are a son of God. Right? And you are stepping up to the court of heaven with confidence. Because the constitution has provisions for you. And you have the DNA of your daddy. So you have a right to the stuff. Stop begging God when you pray. It is not Nice in the court of God. Come on. You don't beg, baby. You are one of his children. Hello. When, when you're going into your mom and your dad and you have confidence in what you're asking them for, you don't come in and begging. You beg when you feel like you don't have the right to get it. And you're on their mercy. But if you are hungry, you don't go say, Mommy, I could. You have little dinner, dear. Mommy, you can't give me a little of the food. You know. I don't eat from morning, you know. Mm? Yeah, so if, if you're begging, you're asking for forgiveness. But if as a child you're hungry and you're in the house and mommy and daddy is there and provide food, you, you don't come and beg food. No, you come and ask with confidence. Hello, somebody. Where are the people them in the house who know what I'm talking about? Hello. So when it comes to God, you don't beg him. You do not beg God. Bishop, are you serious? You mean say, all oh, this time me I cry them long eye water, you feel nothing? You know how many times we try to impress God? Oh Lord, oh, 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 oh. Um, Lord God. Ah! Echo shout. Oh, bowels and mercies. God, if you don't answer me, be dead. Right now, Jesus. Anybody up here? When you pray, you must have confidence that number one, the constitution of God, which is your Bible, has established what is the desire of God for you. So there are certain things that we must pay attention to. Number one, if you're going to be an effective lawyer, what do you have to do? Study the law. You have to study the law, don't? Now, a lawyer basically is like a computer hard drive. A lawyer is like a search engine. <laughs> so what the lawyer does is search for the cases and search for where it's written in the law to support your case. So they look for cases to back up your kind of case to present it that this is precedence for your argument. So the better your lawyer is at remembering or researching and finding out the law and the ability to articulate such will be how successful your course is. Amen. Now when you apply that to the spiritual world, what is our constitution? Our Bible. So the better you are at memorizing the word, knowing what the word said, is the more effective prayer person you will be. So you have to memorize the word of God. You got to read this Bible. You got to be familiar with it. Huh? You got to eat up this book. What does God say about migraine headache? What does God say about financial need? What does God say about demonic oppression? What does God say about my inheritance? What does God say... 
So you have to eat up your Bible. Study it. Go through it. But unlike the lawyers in today's day, right? We have an advantage being children of God. And what is that advantage in terms of recollection? What advantage do you have that these lawyers don't have? You have the Holy Ghost who is a counselor and a comforter and the greatest memory bank there is. For he shall bring back to your memory all the things that you have learned, all the things that God has taught. And more than bring back to your memory, he says he will teach you, he will lead you into all truth. So if you have the Holy Ghost, and you don't remember exactly what the word says, the Holy Ghost can remind you. That's one of the reasons why you must pray and listen. You must listen and pray. You know, some of us just, let me see those who listen before you pray over the food. Part of God in heaven truth. You listen? What are you listening for? To see if your belly is still there. You just pray, right? Let me see those who pray long over their food. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for this food. What is your prayer for over your food? Go ahead. Thank you. She asks for the Lord to make it nutritious to her body. That's a very good prayer. That's more than some of us pray. Sister Esther just said, she just said, thanks. <laughs> and eat, right? All right. So you don't really listen before you pray about your food. But what say you, are, you want to know which high school to choose? You should really listen before you pray. And listen while you pray. What about which university you should go or which college? What about what you should be in the house of God? Lord, what do you call me to be? You should pray and you should listen. For it is the Holy Spirit that is going to tell you oftentimes what you should pray. Because oftentimes we don't know what we should pray. How many of you get bored when you're praying? Easily bored. It's more hands than that. Even some of the older ones, they might tell a lie. How many of you fall off asleep when you pray often? More often than you would like to. It's because you're not focused. It's because you're not engaged in what you're doing. <sighs> when you are having a conversation with someone and they are talking back to you, don't the conversation tend to go long? When it's you and talking, don't you tend to hang up the phone quick? Not true. Some of you know when you want somebody to be hung up, you just stop responding. You hear me, sir? How are you going to say again? When you are praying, you immediately you want to say, Excuse me, you know, may I have to call you back. Some of you get calls when they are coming, we call, we are coming in the spirit, from the physical phone, telling people lies, they are calling, are coming, not a call, are you? When we pray, we are supposed to listen for God to talk to you. No matter how old you are, no matter how young you are. When you pray, you should listen. Lord, what are you saying? Let me see those who pray in the spirit. In the spirit. Oh, what do you mean? Very good question. Let me see those who know what it is to pray in the spirit. Get all deep, you know. Is praying in tongues, praying in the spirit. Oh, that's nice. So what is praying in the spirit? Okay. Yes. Listening to God and talking back. That's right. Very good. Right? So sometimes you pray in tongues when the spirit takes over and prays for you. Yes. Oh, you never know, Esther. Yes. The Holy Ghost will take over at times and you will pray in tongues. Many of you, the Holy Ghost, try to do it. But you cut him off. It's like, me not pray no foolishness when me no understand. 
How am I speaking in tongues? I don't know one word that I am saying. Me, I stop praying. How many of you try to draw breaks on the prayer when the Holy Ghost is taking you over? Prayer, you pray, you have pride. You don't want nobody to look for you and say, oh, 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 what you have said? <laughs> yes, but when the Holy Ghost is upon you and the Spirit of the Lord wants to pray through you, hello? This is interesting. The Holy Spirit will take you over if you allow him and he will pray through you. You can pray in tongues for a long time. Yes, because you're speaking in another language. So just like how we are talking in English, and I've been talking for quite some time, you can be talking in a heavenly language under the unction of the Holy Spirit for a long time, praying mysteries that you don't understand, but it is effective. Anyway, let me, let me put it this way. Have you ever heard a lawyer use certain phrases in court that only the judge understand on other lawyers? Good. No. We don't always have to pray out loud. You can pray in your mind, but when you do that, you tend to go astray more easily in your mind. You tend to lose focus more easily in your mind. And... Uh, when you pray out loud, you're affecting your physical world, right? But when you're praying in your mind, you're not affecting your physical world when you pray. It, it helps you to focus more when you pray out. So you don't need to pray loud, loud. You know? Our Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, I thank you for today. Right. And you, you pray in a low tone. But you, you, you know. All right. There is a difference between congregational prayer and personal prayer. What is the main difference between congregational or collective prayer and personal prayer? Personal prayer is like when you pray to God by yourself and congregation prayer is when you pray with other people. Right. So personal prayer is when you're talking to God directly for yourself on your own behalf. Congregational prayer is when we are all praying about a particular thing. Oh no, I'm giving my... Some people trouble tonight. So, let me ask you something. Is it recorded that Jesus prayed united prayers with any one of his disciples? Y'all are being smart, right? No, it's no. Every reference to Jesus praying is he's alone. He's by himself, he goes to the wilderness, he goes to the mountain, he's praying alone. He says, when you pray, do what? Go into your closet. And do what? Close the door and talk to your heavenly father in secret. Prayer is primarily to be a personal activity. You need to pray personally, okay? All right. You need to be praying personally. You need, to, you need to engage God on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And remember now, God is more interested in your personal praying than your public praying. Because a lot of times when we pray publicly, it don't reach further than the roof. Because a lot of times we are not focused. You're not. You're trying to impress somebody. Lord of mercy, they ever go make the mistake to call you for prayer for open church. The opening prayer. Make sure you memorize around five scripture because you have to draw for two of them, you know. And you make sure so you feel the unction and you shine up your echo shire. And you, and you, and you, you know, you, you're ready up because you're going to pray now. My God, man, when you take the mic, you start screaming after the second word. And not even God know what you are saying. Right? God wants us to realize that he is interested in releasing things to us. And that we need to have a personal dialogue with him. Right? God speaks back to you when you pray. You must listen for God to talk back to you. Can we lift our hands, our right hands? And just ask the Lord to cover our minds right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray you cover the minds of your children. As they are eager to learn God. As they want to understand. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the wisdom that belongs to them to be released to them. 
in Jesus' name. The understanding to be released to them in Jesus' name. I bind every spirit of fear and of doubt, hallelujah, and of worry and of depression and of woe that want to be casted over our children in the name of Jesus, our students. Let your spirit come upon us mightily, Lord God, to grant us wisdom and revelation, knowledge, insight and hindsight and foresight. And all that we need from your bosom, let it be granted unto us now. Keep us safe in the shallow and hollow of your hand. Let thy will be done and let it be seen to be done in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say, Amen.